Hey everyone and welcome to another Unity 3D tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys about the 2D tool set that came with 4.3. Now I haven't covered this tool set yet but I did say before that I would be covering this in the future so here's going to be a tutorial about that. So I'm just going to be teaching you guys how to set up your sprites, how to set up your scene and everything like that. So if you go and download 4.3 you just go file new project like usual and you're going to want to go down here to this drop down. Now this is a new feature in 4.3 and allows you to choose between 2D and 3D. So pretty much the difference between this is one is you know more of a 3D viewport and it's got a 3D camera with perspective view and all that. And 2D is just you know set up in 2D grid with a orthographic camera and it's just set up a lot easier so you don't have to position the camera and the grid and everything in a certain way. It's already pre-set up that way. And this will also allow you to drag and drop sprites and place all that stuff. Now, with this tool set, you can also go into 3D just by clicking this. So if you're making a 2D slash 3D game, which means you want you know 3D objects in a 2D scene or something like that, you could always go about it that way just by switching off of this and moving around your 3D objects. Now the cool thing about the 2D tools is actually being able to create layers with your different textures that you place. So if you want to have something in the foreground, background, whatever, you can place different layers on that. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So if we go down to sprites, so I'm just going to be using sprites from the How to Clone a Pokemon series. Since some people may be wanting to use the 2D tool set instead, It'll make creating the game a little bit easier, a little more simplified, and some better tools for that. So if we go and we click on one of our sprite sheets, the cool thing about the new 2D tools is you can actually slice up this sprite sheet in order to grab each one of these textures without actually, you know, making them individually like this one. So if you have a sprite sheet with a lot of different sprites on it, and you want to divide them up without, you know, taking them into Photoshop and slicing them up there and importing them. You can actually handle that all here. The new tool set can do that for you. So if we actually click on the texture itself, just import it as usual. And we'll drop this down and bring down the sprite. Now you can set this for single, which will just make this all one sprite. Or you can actually set this to multiply. Or multiple. So what this will do is allow you to slice up your sprite sheet and make these individual. So if you actually click on the sprite editor, you can see that it already went and sliced up our different sprites. Indicated by these little gray boxes around each one. So it just goes goes through and it separates each one. And what it'll do is it'll go down here and create individual ones here. Now if you want to slice this a different way, you could set up a grid, you could set up, you know, the pixel size of, you know, what the size of the pixels are in the grid and slice it that way. Or you could just mess around with the different tools and change it how you want. Um, doing the automatic is probably best because it'll slice up everything how you want it. If you want a specific way, um, you can go ahead and, you know, slice it yourself. So I'll close this down, I'll apply, and now we have everything we need for this. We can go through, just ignore it being blurry. It'll look fine when we drag this in the game. So if we're in our 2D window here, we can drag and drop our character onto here. And we can move him around just by clicking and moving our cursor around. So that's another cool feature that they added for this. And as you can see here, we have all our settings, order, order layer, and this will be be so you can actually you know change it to what order you want so if you want something in the background and my background should be at probably zero and if you want something above that one two three so you can just organize your layers for where you want your characters to go and different stuff like that so we'll place that there and I'll drop this down now I will show you guys later how to actually animate this using this system but for now I'm just going to be showing you guys the basics of how to use this whole system so now we're going to go to our grass and we'll drop this down and make this a sprite as well. We'll just make this a single one too since we don't have multiple in here. And we'll go down here and we'll drag and drop it into our scene. Now you see that we have both our objects here. Now you can actually go and scale this up if you want, just how we would normally scale. 
or you can do that and it'll just adjust it to whatever size that you want. And now if we take this, you see that it goes over our player. Maybe that's something we don't want. So what we can actually do is we can leave this at zero and we can click on our player and we can set this to one, hit enter, and look at that, our player is on top of our grass now. So another cool thing we can do now is let's say you're walking around and you have some kind of maybe a cliff overhang or something like that that you want your player to walk under. Now there's a simple way of doing this. This is also a great way if you have transparent looking uh, textures and you want to add multiple layers of each one of these and layer it a certain way. But we'll just do control C and control V to duplicate this and we can move it up here real quick. Now if we move our character here, you know it's going, it's going to be the same. Both these are on layer zero. Now if we want to change this up a little bit, we actually have to increase this, or let's see, zero, one, okay, I guess we'll just go and change this one. We'll change this one to two, and I'll show you guys what happens now. So since these are all on different layers, our player is in the middle layer, they'll be on top of this one, and they'll actually go underneath that one, because that, depending on which layer. So it renders the lowest one first, and then it goes up. So that's why we have zero, this is one, and this is two. So using this tool set, you can easily adjust different things and create cool different effects for that and your tiles. So I'm just going to go and set this back to zero for now. So that is the basics of actually importing your different sprites and getting those set up in game. So I guess the last thing to talk about is just the camera. So it's pretty basic. I think we've messed around with this before for the Let's Clone a Pokemon game series. And what we can do with this is we can move it around or do whatever we want with this. It's going to be locked into 2D, but it should be set to orthographic because we talked about perspective and orthographic before. Or perspective is more 3D. It'll define edges of 3D objects. Orthographic is just looking straight down as if you were staring through some kind of picture frame and there's no shadows or anything like that. I guess unless you actually, you know, added them in or whatnot. And then size, so it'll actually change the size. Just think of size as zoom, so it'll zoom in on our actual character. So we can set this up here, and we can change the size. So we'll zoom in real quick, and I'll hit play just so you can see it a little bit. See how it's very zoomed in? So if we want to, you know, change this, zoom it out a bit, we can see that it's a lot tinier now. So yeah, that's the basics of the tutorial so far. Hopefully I'll be making a couple more. We can talk about 2D physics and different programming for 2D games itself. Maybe we'll make a little mini game or something like that. But I will be going over and teach you guys a couple more features that are very cool with the new 2D toolset.